Amen. What about you? You love preaching? I love preaching. I love it. I can't get enough of it. I, I listen to it uh, on the internet. I listen to it going down the road. I come to church and listen to it. I just love preaching. Hey, Amen. Preaching changed my life, brethren. Preaching done anything for you? Preaching. Preaching. Well, we need these, to teach this young generation. That's where it's at. Preaching. Hey, Amen. I'm not going to preach, are you? Just sing. Hey, Amen. We love that, too. in his hands who has numbered every grain of sand kings and nations tremble at his voice all creation rises to
Bless his holy name. Hey. Good man. Praise God. God's word. Amen. 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 He will reign forever. Amen. <laughs> Nowadays we we've got to do these elections and terms. I'm glad he doesn't he doesn't get voted out because he didn't get voted in. Amen. Uh, he's certainly not going to be impeached. Amen. And he ain't going to resign. Amen. He will reign forever. And of his kingdom, there'll be no end. Thank the Lord. What a joy it is, not just to be here, but to know that. Amen. And we certainly thank the Lord. I'm honored to be here again. Thank you, Pastor, for the kind invitation and hospitality, you dear folks. I've always enjoyed being here. My mom and dad send their regards, and certainly they've enjoyed the time they've been able to be here and certainly value the friendship of the pastor, his family, and this precious church. It's such an honor to be back here. And by the way, I like Bible conferences, amen? Amen. Things centered around the Bible, and we certainly thank the Lord. And I want to thank Pastor Domley for the message tonight. Thank you for preaching what God laid on your heart. It spoke to my heart, and I trust that it spoke to all of our hearts. And I hope we'll live differently than how we were living before we came here. And I'm trusting that God will continue to move in my life and all the lives of people. I believe we're living in the last days, but God's not dead. Amen. And I want to do more for the Lord today than I ever have, and I'm trusting that God will continue to use me. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Psalms, if you would. Psalm 86. Psalm 86, if you would. And I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet with me once again for the reading of God's Word. We're in Psalm 86. If you find your place there, let's look at the Word of God. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O thou, my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive. Plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. Thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord, I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord, God, with all my heart. And I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul, and have not set thee before them. For thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. Oh, turn unto me and have mercy on, upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant and save the son of thine handmaid. Show me a token for good, that they which hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because thou, Lord, has hope me and comforted me. Let the church say amen. amen. Our Father, I pray God for unction to function tonight. I pray God that you take me as your vessel, cleanse me of sin, empty me of self, and fill me with your spirit. I understand God tonight that you don't need me, but I certainly need you. And I pray, God, tonight that you'd bind the devil, put a hedge of protection about this place, that in no way he'd hinder the work of the Holy Ghost of God. And then, Father God, I pray that you would allow the word of God to fall on good ground, that it may bring forth fruit that will remain. If somebody in the building on a Tuesday night is lost and on his way to a devil's hell, 
Might tonight be that night that that one comes to a saving knowledge of the truth. We're thankful there's still room at the cross. Now, Father, bless now the preach word of God as you have time and time again. And I ask that you'd bless my wife and the rest of my children while I'm gone. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. I don't know about you. I love the book of Psalms. It is my personal practice to spend time in the Word of God reading three chapters out of the Old Testament, three chapters out of the New Testament, one proverb, and five Psalms a day. So I find myself in the book of Psalms. When someone's battling depression and discouragement, I encourage them to read the book of Psalms. Because the Psalms are sitting around God. And it's hard to be down on yourself when you're looking up at God. This Psalm is a Psalm of David. I found myself months ago reading five Psalms in the Word of God on one morning and ending up in Psalm 86. I know I've read it many times before. I know I've studied it before. I've even preached from it before. But on that day, it did something for me like it had never done before. By the way, I'm glad that we read a Bible that's alive. The writer of Hebrews says it's quick. That means it's alive. That means no matter how many times you read it, it'll help you. No matter how many times you've memorized it, it'll help you. I don't know about you. There have been times I've read a verse many times. I read it again and thought, how did I miss that before? There have been times I've preached from preach from a passage and somebody else preached it and I thought, I never saw that. I'll tell you why. There's nothing like the Bible. And once I run into somebody that says, I don't read the Bible because it's boring. I want to tell you that somebody that's never read the Bible. From cover to cover, it's still the bestseller. I thank God for the word of God. It's not come up with by man. It's not articulated by human flesh. All scriptures give by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished under all good works. You tell me how God can take 40 men over 1,600 period of time and produce an inspired, infallible, inerrant word of God. The grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of God shall endure forever. Forever thy word is settled in heaven and in earth, sanctified by thy truth, for thy word is truth. Thy word have I hid my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cling? to say by taking heed thereto according to thy word with my whole heart I've assaulted. Oh let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right and I hate every false way. The law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul more to be desired of hay than gold. Yea than much fine gold. Sweet also than honey than the honey coat. Blessed is the man that walketh on the counsel of the God nor stand in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of scornful but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law he doth meditate day and night this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate there and day and night that thou mayest observe to according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success every once in a while we ought to thank God not only for revelation not only for inspiration but for preservation that we still have the Bible and it is one of a kind. It's prophetic. It's perfect. It's powerful. It's potent. It's probing. It's piercing. It's penetrating. It's profitable. It's perfecting. It's precious because it's God's word. And I was in it again and I saw something I hadn't seen before. I found myself diving into the life of David. David was a servant of God. He was a man after God's own heart. It came time to choose him to play an instrument for Saul's evil spirit. He came highly recommended. He was prudent. He was comely. He was valiant. He was a warrior. But here's the greatest recommendation you could ever give a man. The Lord is with him. The Lord is with him. 
Now, Saul, you talking about the devil getting on you? The best thing to get the devil out of you is to get God up in here. Amen? And when they brought David into the palace and he played that instrument, by the way, he wasn't just playing with skill. He was playing with spirituality. Amen? The Spirit of God was upon him. And David was a man after God's own heart. He was a sweet psalmist of Israel. He was a giant killer. He was a servant. He was one that we can look up to. He was one that walked with God. So I love reading after David. We don't know the exact time in David's life when this psalm was written. But we can look over the totality of the life of David and see this psalm as one that's very productive and practical. David was not only a king, he was a husband. He was a father. He was a son. He was a friend. He was a warrior. He was a writer. He was a musician. He was a counselor. He was a mentor. And yet I can imagine in the life of David, he got up every day and every bit of him wanted to be the best king. And every bit of him wanted to be the best father. And every bit of him wanted to be the best son. And every bit of him wanted to be the best servant. And every bit of him wanted to be the best general. And every bit of him wanted to be the best mentor. And every bit of him wanted to be the best counselor. Yet without a doubt in his mind, he had all of these responsibilities and all of these obligations pulling at him at the same time. And he probably felt like his mind was all over the place. Anybody ever been there? God, God, it's kind of like the game of golf. You drive well, you chip bad. You putt good, you drive bad. Right? Your chipping gets good, your putting gets bad. It, it, it's like when you fix one area, another area messes up. And without a doubt, I know that's where David felt. God, I want a war right. God, I want to lead right. God, I want to be the right kind of family man. I don't want to mess up on my wife. God, I want to be a right leader. I want to be a great king. I want to have great vision. I want to have great purpose. I want to have great balance. But I feel like I'm being pulled. I'm being jerked. I'm being dragged. I'm being prodded all over the place. And in Psalm 86, he appealed to Almighty God and made a statement in this psalm that is stuck with me. It has helped me. It has encouraged me and challenged me. Look here with me if you would. In verse number 11. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Now I want you to think just a moment. The word heart in the Bible is not talking about the organ that pumps blood. It's talking about the combination of our mind, our emotions, and our will. Now look here, Dave was a good man. And in many areas of life, he's a great example for all of us. But I think David in Psalm 86 was saying, God, I wake up some days, my mind's over there, my emotions are over there, and my will's over there. My will wants to do that, my feelings want to do that, and my mind wants to do that. And there's no way if my mind, my emotions, and my will are scattered all over the place that I can effectively live for God. But I serve a God in heaven who put the stars in space, who put the moon in place, who put the sun in the sky, and it never falls down, who took from the dust of the ground, formed man, breathed in the man's nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. God, I'm all over the place, but with those same hands that made man, would you take that heart, dial it to the middle, take those emotions, dial them to the middle, take that mind, dial it to the middle, take that wheel, dial it to the middle, and if you get all of me here, all in the same place, united to fear thy name, I can live for you. Amen. I want to preach tonight to the people of God in 2018. Who like me sometimes? Feel like we're all over the place. You ever come to church and you were here, but you weren't here? Your body was in the chair, but your mind was back at work. Your will was in the choir loft, but your feelings were in your bank account. Come on. Your body 
was in the service, but your mind was on the ball game. Could I tell you in these last days, we can't serve God half-hearted. We can't serve God compartmentalized. We can't serve God half-stepping. I won't tell you what my prayer is. I want to be a good daddy. I want to be a good father. I want to be a good husband. I want to be a good, listen to me, three times a week. I stand behind a pulpit at 5811 Hoffman's Lane, Bellis Cross, Virginia, 22041. That's the address of the Crossroads Baptist Church where the providence of God has set this preacher man to pastor the flock of God. They don't need a sermon from a briefcase or some fancy statements from a fortune cookie. They need a word from the Lord. And I can't be stuck back mad about my bills, confused about my future, and hung up on some mess. I'm praying that the God of the universe will take my mind, my emotions, my will, unite it together, and may all of me fear his name. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Maybe you're, you're not strung out in sin. You're not messed up in foolishness. You're just all over the place. And if we could ever get all of us dialed in on all of him, yeah. we'd do something for God. Yeah. Very quickly tonight, follow me through David's plea tonight to unite my heart to fear thy name. It, it begins, if you would, with what I call a desperate plea. Notice he says, I need an attentive connection with God. Bow down thine ear, O Lord. In other words, God, I'm not just trying to dial you. God, I want to connect with you. Come on now. He said, I don't just want to make vain repetitions and utter repetitive redundancies. He said, God, if I'm going to open my mouth and direct it to heaven, bow down thy ear. I tell you, people of God, if God's going to unite our hearts to fear his name, we need to learn how to get through to heaven. He said, I need an attentive connection because I'm facing an adverse condition. I'm poor and needy. We just heard the man of God say, We'll go through trials. We'll go through difficulties. We'll go through hardships. My attentive connection, my adverse condition. He said, my able consecration. He said, God, he said, I want you, if you would, to conserve me now. He said, not just because of my consecration, but I need your conservation. I don't want the devil to destroy me. I don't want sin to have me. I don't want pride to upload me. I want to live for you. He says, God, acknowledge my consecration. Notice he said, preserve my soul for I'm holy. <laughs> There's a whole lot of us asking God to take care of us, but are we holy? He said, God, look out for me because I live for you. Holiness counts for something. Come on now. I said in 2018 in a postmodern society where men applaud evil and they disdain good. I'm trying to tell you in the economy of God who doesn't sit in the White House or on the throne in England but on the throne of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in heaven I'm telling you holiness still counts for something. It still matters to be a godly husband and a submissive wife and an obedient child and a faithful church member. It still matters. Somebody wants God's conservation but God wants your consecration. Notice the applied compassion of God. Be merciful unto me. My soul, notice the abundant cry of David. For unto thee, O Lord, I lift up my soul. He said, God, give me mercy. Because I lift up my soul. I'm going to tell you something. Prayer matters. Amen. Notice he said, I need the activated cheer from God. Rejoice the soul of thy servant. <laughs> Rejoice the soul. Of, he didn't say, God, give me a new job. He didn't say, God, give me a new iPhone. He didn't say, God, give me a check in the mail. He didn't say, God, put me in a new car. He didn't say, God, give me a raise on that same job. He said, you rejoice my soul. And can I tell you, things will make you happy for a minute, but the happiness will leave you faster than it came. But there's nothing like the hand of God reaching down into your soul and rejoicing. I won't tell you, I've been there. I've been there where it wasn't money. It wasn't words. It wasn't Red Bull. It was God Almighty that reached down in my soul and rejoiced my soul. I'm looking for somebody that knows God who's happy about it. God, unite me. Unite me. 
I don't just want to be a head counted on the attendance roll of the church. I want all of me to be engaged in the worship of a holy God. And my aimed call, he says, I lift up my soul. Notice, secondly, not only the desperate plea, but the directed praise. <laughs> you know, in my heart, God, to fear thy name, I'm, I'm, I'm begging you. Oh, God, I'm praying I need your help. But watch this praise now. Verse 5, for thou, Lord, mm, 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 art good. His praise began with what I call a convicted expression. Now listen to me. I tell our people at Crossroads, when you're drowning in the depths of despair about what you don't know about life, you better let what you do know about God keep you afloat until you find out something else. I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what's going to happen in America. I don't know what's going to happen in North Korea. I don't know what's going to happen in the Congress. But one thing I do know, preacher, I know that the God that saved me is a good God. He's a good God. Somebody ought to be glad tonight that you don't serve dead Muhammad. You don't pray to fat Buddha. You're not bound to the priest. You're not talking to your grandma that's a cow now. You serve Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Jehovah Nisei, your banner. Jehovah Ra'a, your shepherd. Jehovah Rasa, your healer. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord who's peace. Jehovah Shama, the Lord who is present. Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord who is our righteousness. And he is good. Amen. He said, God, you, you're a God of supreme favor. You're a God of steady forgiveness. You not only forgive, but you're ready to forgive. Some people forgive, but they ain't ready to. You ever heard somebody tell you, I'm going to forgive you, but I, not yet. I'll let you know when I'm going to forgive you. Y'all ever talk and get things right? We're going to talk, but I ain't ready yet. I'm glad that if I confess my sins, yeah. he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins yeah. and to cleanse me from all. I'm glad he don't put me on probation. Amen. I'm glad he don't send me to time out. Amen. I'm glad I don't have to go to the corner with my nose in the wall. I'm glad he doesn't put me on ignore. I'm glad he doesn't block my phone number. I'm glad that when I mess up, and I do, and I hate to act like I know your business, but you, you mess up too. I'm glad that when we mess up, and we do, that we serve a God who is ready to forgive. My convicted expression is that you're a God of supreme favor. You're a God of steady forgiveness. You're a God of splendid forbearance. Notice he said, plenteous in mercy. Jeremiah was sitting in that chair, wasn't he? Lamentations 3. Yeah. Sitting in it. Oh, right. the worm would end the gall. I'm in derision daily. They mock me. I'm getting tired of this. Serving you, messing up my image. Watch it now. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, nothing circumstantially changed, but his perspective did. Right. This I recall to my mind. Oh, Therefore I have I hope. <laughs> It is of your mercies that we are not consumed. I hate to bust your bubble, but you ain't here because you work out. You ain't here because you financially plan. You ain't here because your granddaddy gave you good genes. You're not here because you're real savvy in your innovation. You're here because God, in spite of you, has preserved you by his mercy. And David said, I'll tell you what drives me to unite my heart, to fear God's name, because the God that I serve is the one God that's plenteous in mercy. My convicted Amen. expression, my committed expectation, he says, give ear, verse 6, unto my prayer and tend to the voice of my supplication. He said, God, I'm going to have constant prayers that are girded up by a confident persuasion. What is it? In the day, verse 7, of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. You don't need some tangible blessing to praise God. Praise him, because when you call, he answers. Amen. Every once in a while, I can see somebody and call them, watch them pick up their phone and not answer me. And I want to be honest with you, I'm ready to bust them in the head in the name of Jesus, because I know you heard me. I know you saw the phone call. I know you identified the call ID. 
and you didn't answer me. But David said, I'm praising God because when I lift up my eyes into the hills and I call him, he answers me. My convicted expression, my committed expectation, my confessed exclusiveness about God among the gods. There is none like unto thee. I'm glad I don't serve one of the gods. I'm glad I don't serve a pretty good God. I'm glad I don't serve a somewhat better God. I serve the one true God. Listen to me, my friend. We could be in a mosque tonight. We could be Islam tonight. We could be praying to the sun tonight. We could be bowing to a cow tonight. But the providence of God not only led us to church, but it led us to the truth. I'm glad he's not only the God, he's my God. His singular worthiness. Singular worthiness. Nobody's worthy but God. By the way, what I'm thinking about in our movement, we better make sure that while we look up to people and we get examples from people and we have role models in people that we only worship God. We got a lot of man worship going on today. You don't bow down to nobody. And more of us preachers need to make sure when they bow down that like Peter said to Cornelius, stand up. I myself am a man. You want to worship somebody. Worship the one who was here when nobody was here. Worship the one who's omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing, omnipresent, and at the same time, immutable, can't change, eternal, was, and is, and is to come. Worship God. His singular worthiness and his superior works. Neither are there any works like unto thy works. His candid exclamation, watch this now, all the nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. I, I, I want to tell you something. We deal with a lot of religions today, and every time I look, it looks like they come out with another one. And if there were not for a dollar, we wouldn't have so many versions of the Bible. Could I tell you, though, there's coming a day. I'm not a prophet, but I'm about to prophesy. There's coming a day when every knee shall bow. I said every knee shall bow. And every tongue's going to confess. Some of them tongues going to be brought up from hell. And they're going to confess. Amen. And they're going to confess that God is God. That Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of, listen to me. We're talking about a man who said he was all over the place. But you know what got him back closer to the center of what God wanted him to do? Praise and worship. When your mind is out of control, don't skip church. Run to church. When you're going through trials, don't close your Bible. Open your Bible. When you're going through difficulty, don't get in an attitude. Get in adoration. Praise will get your mind right. Amen. Amen. His clear Amen. explanation. Thou art great. And do us wondrous thing. Your incredible greatness, your isolated Godhead. Thou art God alone. He don't need help. I said he doesn't need help. Now look number three. His diligent pursuit. David had a genuine desire. Now watch this now. I'm all over the place, God. My mind's here, my emotions here, my will there. I'm, I'm, I'm messed up, but he had a pursuit. Here's his pursuit, girded by a genuine desire. Teach me thy way, O oh Lord. Oftentimes we want our way. You know why sometimes we're all over the place? We're looking for the wrong information. Amen. The preacher already got on Facebook, so I don't have to hit on that. But it's true. I tell our people, get off Facebook, get your face in the book. Amen. But some folks on television, some folks, some folks know politics, but they don't know the Bible. They spend all day talking about what's going on at the White House and Congress and, 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 and listen to me. I'm not saying we should be ill-informed, but I'm trying to tell you, David didn't need politics. Yeah. David said, teach me thy way, O Lord. Teach me thy way, O Lord. In other words, I want supernatural information. I want thy way. By the way, counsel is great, but we better stop making decisions based on what the consensus is of well-known fundamental brethren, and we better make decisions based on what is the consensus of Almighty God. Teach me thy way, O Lord. Supernatural information, and I've got a servant's intention, and I will walk in truth. Stop asking for information if you ain't going to do nothing with 
every once in a while I run into a Christian in the church. They won't sit down and have a discussion for about three hours about election. What, can you explain election versus predestination versus the personal will of God? And I have, I have a position on those matters. But oftentimes my, my, my advice to that person is, you need to deal with Hebrews 20, 10, 25 and come to church. Amen. Why in the world should God teach you how to speak Spanish if you can't speak English? Right? You don't need to learn about election if you won't learn about faithfulness to church. Huh? Pastor, can we have one of those seminars of these guys that come in here and give us a financial planning to the church? And I'm not against financial planning, but the best financial planning you could do is tithe for 52 weeks. I tell all people, don't get nervous when I start talking about tithing. I haven't even started talking about your money yet. The tithe is the Lord's. You say, preacher, what are you saying? I'm simply saying maybe God hadn't taught you because you ain't living what he already taught you. Come on now, teach me thy way and I will walk in truth. You want to learn more? Do what you've already learned. Once you do that, he'll teach you more. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether I speak of God or I speak of myself. Turn you at my reproof. Pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Here's what David said. If you teach me, I'll walk in it. He had a genuine desire. He had a guaranteed decision. What is it? Verse 12. I'll praise thee with all my heart. I'll glorify thy name forevermore. And you can't just do that when things are going well. Praise don't have anything to do with how things are going. It has anything to do with who's controlling them. Amen. God's good all the time. And God is God all the time. Amen. It's amazing when you're pastoring how you can watch people from the platform and know what kind of week they're having. You can look at that brother, you say, this morning they were shouting. Tonight they pouting. <laughs> and if it's in the month of September, their football team must have lost. Yeah. Huh? And I'm not a hunter or a fisher, but I imagine that some people pout when the, the hunting didn't go well. Yeah. The fishing didn't go well. The shopping wasn't long enough. But wait a minute now. God's just as much God at night as he was in the morning. Yep. Come on now. He's just as much God in the valley as he was when you were on the mountaintop. He's just as much God as when you broke as he was when you had money. David said, God, I messed up. My mind's all over the place. But I've made up my mind. I will bless your name with all my heart. Yeah. Amen. Glad devotion. Great is thy mercy. Great is thy mercy. Oh, God, I know what you've done for me. Great is your mercy. Boy, every once in a while, we, we need to tell God about himself. Yeah. His grateful declaration. Thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. You do believe in hell, don't you? Huh? I'm convinced most Christians don't, because if they did, they'd be trying to keep people out of it. What's the point of believing in it if you ain't going there? Most folks figure, I'm saved. Well, I need to worry about hell. Well, you need to worry about who's going there. And you need to rejoice that you're not. He said, thou hast delivered me from the lowest hell. When you find yourself dwelling down in the depths of despair, remember where you'd be were it not for grace. Remember where you were headed when God saw you. You weren't a first round draft pick. Scarcely for a righteous man, some would die yet peradventure. For a good man, some would even dare to die. But God committed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There was nothing good in us. All of our righteousnesses were as filthy rags, but he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. I'm glad I'm not going to hell. Amen. He had a diligent pursuit. Notice number four, his distressed predicament. He began to highlight here in verse number 14 the people that were attacking him. Oh, God, the proud are risen against me. You think that was part of the reason why he was all over the, pra all over the place? Hey, if we're not careful, our enemies will cause us to lose focus. You ever left church on Sunday excited about serving God and got to work on Monday and thought, oh, these people. <laughs> and by the time you get back Wednesday, you so beat up, you got to start back over again from before Sunday. Listen, he said, God, I've got rising adversaries 
I've got raging assemblies. He said, they're, they're violent men. Violent men. He said, they're rebellious antagonists. They've sought after my soul. Listen to me, you live for God, there are going to be people that seek after your soul. They'll be licking their lips with a fork and a knife in their hand. Why? Why? Very simply, David said, he said, they're standing against me, watch this now, because they have not set thee before them. Are you listening to me now? He said, the reason why they're against me is because they don't know you. I hate to remind you of this, but there was a day you didn't love God. There was a day you wouldn't have been at church on a Tuesday. You didn't even come on Sundays. I know you're feeling good about yourself, and I know I kind of feel good about myself sometimes. But were it not for the grace of God, you wouldn't know where Habakkuk was. Were it not for the grace of God, I'd have said, turn to Hezekiah, and you'd have started turning. Come on now. Some of you think about turning even now. I'm just simply saying. We're here today dressed up on a Tuesday night in the house of God uh, at a Bible conference because he looked beyond our faults and he saw our need. And we better be careful that we don't climb up the lofty perch of Phariseeism looking down at people forgetting to realize if we didn't know God, we'd be just like him. But his righteous assurance was this. Verse 15, you're good. You're full of compassion. You're gracious, long-suffering, plenteous in mercy and truth. When, when, they, when they're trying to beat you up, when you go to work and sinners get promoted and people of integrity get mocked, when you get around your family members and you start talking about how much you love God and they call you weird and they say you're going to mess up your kids for raising them that way and you leave your blood relatives discouraged about living for God, you better go back to the basics and remind the reins of your brains that God is still a God full of compassion. He's gracious. He's long, long suffering. I said long suffering. That means when I take a while to act a fool, God waits on me. And plenty of sin, mercy and truth. And his appeal is turn unto me. Turn! While I'm getting beat up by people, turn God! Turn! mercy on me. Give thy strength unto thy servant. Save the son of thine handmaid. His appeal is very simple. He says, God, give me relief because of our relationship. In other words, give me strength because I'm your servant and not only am I your servant, I'm your son. Aren't you glad that because of who we are in Jesus, we have rights that lost people don't? Pull out your access card. Poke your chest out. Put your head up high. I'm a child of the king. Walk into the holies of holies, according to Hebrews, boldly. Stop walking around. Yeah, we're Christian. We're down here suffering for Jesus. It'll be worth it all when we see Jesus. Are you crazy? It's worth it all now. And a boom, shaka, laka, laka. I'm glad to serve God. Now! Don't feel sorry for me because I'm a Christian. I'm a preacher. And I'm living the old time way. I'm glad I'm a child of God. I got privileges. I'm closing with point, this last point. He says, I've got a distressed predicament, but I've got a distinct petition. Here's where we close. Show me a token for good. Just, 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 God just need a little breakthrough. You ever go to the mall, into the food court, Walk past one of them Chinese plates. They got that bourbon chicken on a toothpick. My soul, that food tastes good. You know what it is? It's a token for good. See, 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 see when, you, when, you, when, when you take that toothpick and you put that chicken in your mouth and you lick your lips, mm, this bourbon chicken's good. You know what that person standing in there with that bowl of chicken wants you to know? There's plenty more where that came from. I said there's plenty more when that came from. Hey, 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 you know what David's saying? God, 
I may not get all the way out of this predicament. I, I may not wake up tomorrow morning and the cancer's gone. I may not check my bank account next week and there'll be a million dollars in it. I may not get off my knees and that rebellious child is standing at the doorstep. But God, if you could just send me a spiritual piece of chicken on a toothpick to remind me there's plenty more where that came from. Old Ruth came marching into town as a Moabitish widow disdained by all the crowd. But she got up and said, I'm going to glean in the field. And the Bible said she found some handfuls of purpose. Boaz had left some there on purpose to let her know, girl, there's plenty more where that came from. Maybe you want a smorgasbord from God. But if he gave you a smorgasbord, you may not ever come back to the restaurant. So tonight, just ask him for a token for good. Just a little glimpse. Of your blessing. My sincere request. He said in my sincere request. Is also coupled. With a specific realization. Notice what he said. Show me a token for good. That they which hate me may see it. <laughs> Remember them licking their lips. With the fork in the knife. Christian Christian. Yum yum yum. Now we're laughing, but don't you feel like that at work some days? Christian, Christian, yum, yum, yum. With these, these kids trying to live for God in this wicked society? Christian teenager, yum, yum, yum. Sitting on the front row, yum, yum, yum. And, and you know what happens? We get right where that preacher said in that chair. We, Christianity, everybody's attacking us. My boss doesn't like me. My family thinks I'm crazy. All the cute guys think I'm too modest. You know, listen to me now. If you're not careful, you'll be complaining about all the people that are attacking you. But wait, there's good news. There's good news. David said, show me a token for good that they may see it. Since they're all looking, they might as well watch you feed me, God. Amen. That's why I like Psalm 23. You know what Psalm 23 doesn't say? Oh, Lord, all of these people are trying to destroy me. No, he said, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Christian, I hear people say all the time, I don't like being in the ministry. You have to live in a fishbowl. Well, good. Let them watch you eat. Amen. 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 <laughs> don't just feed me so I can taste it. Feed me so they can see it. Amen. It's about time that lost people found out by watching our lives that God yeah. still takes care of his children. Yeah. Yeah. Show me a token for good. Not just so I can brag on how good it tastes, but so that all those people at my job go, you still serving God. All those churches that go, y'all still use the King James Bible. All those people that go, y'all still pre believe in preaching on sin. Y'all ain't going to never act. You're never going to act like you're enjoying life. You're never going to have a good church. God, just give us a big day every once in a while so everybody in town will go, them crazy people still got people attending their church. Amen. Amen. Show me a token for good that they may see it. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. Sincere request. Specific revelation. Subsequent result. Notice what he said. That they which hate me may see it. Next phrase. And be ashamed. When God blesses you and worldly and lost people can see it, they'll think twice about criticizing you next time. <laughs> you remember the first day you, that cantankerous co-worker or friend teased you about everything Christian you did? Oh, here you go again, praying over your food. There you go again, telling me not to cuss. There you go again, talking about church again. Oh, here comes Mr. Church person. Can't say nothing around them. And then after a while, they start watching you go through trials with the joy of the Lord on your face. They start watching God bless you. They saw what God did in your kids. Your, your, your kids had to skip practice on Wednesday because they went to church. Their kids went to practice, but now your kids serving God and they're having problems with their kids. And all of a sudden, they start looking at you going, hmm. You kind of crazy, but I kind of like it. Yeah. And then a new, a, new, a new co-worker gets hired. And you start praying over your food. And that new co-worker goes, oh, here we go. One of them, and that old co-worker that used to talk about, 
نام ہے لوگوں ہش مین ڈونٹ ٹیل ایم ناٹ ٹو پر فوڈ ایس ہیم ٹو بلیس آل آر فوڈ سم باڈی ہیز واچ گاڈ گیو یو ٹوکن فار گڈ اینڈ اٹس کالز دیٹ پرسن ٹو ہیو پاز ان ماکنگ یور کرسچین ایمین The subsequent result of God's blessings is that people see it and are ashamed at knocking the God that you serve and the service with which you serve him. And then he closes with this thought. He says, there's a sure reasoning. This is why they are ashamed, because thou, Lord, has hoped me and comforted me. Can I remind you that when God takes care of you, you're not the only one that notices People are watching. Good night they're watching. And I'm telling you, you know, let's talk, let's be honest, preachers. Sometimes our headaches are not from good versus bad. Our headaches are from which good to do. I got a visit over here, and I'm going to the hospital over here, and I got a wife over here, and I got kids over here, and I... I got work and then Bible conference and God, I feel like I'm all over the place. And David says, you're the God of the universe. This mind that I can't seem to find. Somebody said, I've lost a lot of things in life, but the thing I miss the most is my mind. <laughs> This thing, sometimes, you listen, you'd keep your mind if you knew where you lost it. And by the way, you can't live the Christian life based on your feelings. Your feelings are fickle. Yeah, yeah. Right. You don't even always feel saved. Right. You're not saved because of feeling. You're saved because the fact says, right. if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Amen. And then your will. Sometimes you know you should do something, but your, your will goes, I ain't doing it. Right. Am I the only one that's done something I know I shouldn't do? Yeah. And has not done something that I know I should? Am I alone or do I have a few witnesses in the house? Right. And here you are. And by the time you find your mind, there goes your will sneaking out the door. And then you find your will and your emotions are going, nah, nanny, boo, boo. And you find yourself all over the place. Hey, David says, God, bring it all together. Get all the sights set on the one target. And once you get my mind, emotions, and will, which together represent my heart, line them up with the bullseye. And here's the bullseye. To fear thy name. We're living in tough times living for God. But the God who deserves Our devotion is able to unite our hearts for his glory. Amen. Father, thank you. I know I'm not the only one in here, Father, who wants to be all in, all together. I know I'm talking to moms who are also wives, to teenagers who are also friends, to workers who are also ministry leaders, to daddies who are also husbands, to pastors who are also mentors and disciplers and soul winners and bread winners. We want to live for you, God, but sometimes we're, we're scatterbrained. And we're asking you tonight, with your all-powerful hands, bring it all together. Unite our hearts to fear thy name. Heads bowed and eyes closed. The pastor will come in just a moment. I wonder how many of you say, preacher, I agree, I concur. I want God to get, get me all together, all of me united to fear him. God's spoken to me tonight. Would you raise your hand all over the building? God bless you. I hope when the pastor comes in just a moment, you'll mind the Lord. I hope every one of you will get up and come to the altar. David had to get desperate about it. If we're not careful, we'll just, be, we'll just keep living scatterbrained until Jesus comes, and we'll understand it better by and by. Some stuff we need to understand now. We need to get it right. We're going to come in here and worship for an hour and a half or two hours at church. We need to worship with all of us. Stop bringing God our bodies and leaving our minds somewhere else. We need his help. If you're here today and you're lost, you don't know the Lord. I hope you'll come tonight. 
Father, would you bless this invitation? Do what only you can. Help us, help me to serve you with a united heart. And once you get it together, may all of me be determined to fear your name. In Jesus' name, amen.